Pat love with Pat's two cents. So you're upset with God because you can't figure out what the heck is wrong with him. Why would God sit there and allow that person to get hurt? Why did God allow Susie Q to get run over by a car? Why did he allow brother so-and-so to get raped, gang raped by a bunch of guys? Why did he allow them to be falsely accused of, of a crime and sent to prison for years? Why did he uh, have that person get pulled over by the cop and then get shot? Why did God allow the person over there to get born with a deformity? Why is he blind? Why is she crippled? Why are they crazy? Why? 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 Why human trafficking? Why corruption? Why? How could a loving God allow all of this? It just doesn't make sense. We don't get it. We can't figure God out. So we, you know, hey, talk to the hand. You ain't on your J-O-B. Don't start requiring stuff from me. And you ain't on your J-O-B letting all this evil take place in this planet. All these good people dying young and being hurt, being victimized, being abused, being raped, being beaten, being shot. And you allow it? That's the way we feel. So we get an attitude toward the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Downright nasty attitude, too. And we blame him for those that have gotten re raped and beaten and those that have gotten ripped off and those who have lost their homes. He, you know, we blame him for the human trafficking. We blame him for the alcoholism. We blame him for the drugs that have been systematically sold in our neighborhoods. We blame him for the drug addicts, prostitutes, pimps. We blame him for corrupt governments, corrupt leaders, greed, 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 pride, corruption, theft, murder, torture, violence. I mean, we just blame him for everything, don't we? Well, listen to this. I want to read a little something, something to you. And we're going to work this thing through. Genesis chapter 2. I want to make sure I'm reading the right one. All right. Starting at verse 7 through verse 9. And the Lord God formed man of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, not existing, Pat's two cents, word, living. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, Eden, not the neighborhood, Eden. And he put the man whom he had formed. That's where he put him. He said, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also, ah, in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now let's stop there. Excuse me. While we are pointing our finger at Almighty God for all that's gone wrong in this world, for all that is going wrong in this world, we forget that God gave us freedom of choice. You say, well, how did that happen? Where? I don't see that in the Bible. Yeah, well, let me show it to you. Verse 9, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, that's the
the tree of life, the tree of good, everything that is vibrant and beautiful and worthwhile and godly. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which means before with the tree of life, good baby, everything is good. It's a good thing. But when you deal with the tree of knowledge of good and evil, therein lies your choice. God had to give us choice because he didn't want slaves obeying him by the hand of the whip. He wanted us obeying him out of the will, free will, that he gave us as a gift. So in order to have free will, which means you have to choose between one or the other, that means your two choices must be opposite in nature. One good, one evil. You get me? All right, stick with me now. So now that we have good and evil, what does man choose? They are enticed by the devil, by the serpent. They yield out of free will. They yield to temptation right and once they yield to temptation sin curses treachery bust out all over this world the ground is cursed for their sakes women have babies with pain men have to work by the by the sweat of their brow i mean it is um laborious labor not joyful no it's laborious so that comes with sin, sin, the choice to choose sin. Now see, what we don't think about is when the enemy presents something to us, he has to mix good with the evil in order to make the evil more appetizing and alluring. It looks enticing because it's pretty, it's tintillating to the senses. Yes, right? All right. Now, for that reason, it's easy for man to fall into sinful ways because their nature now is evil. So you've got pride. Wait, let's start from the beginning. The lust of the eyes, they saw the tree. The lust of the flesh, they desired the fruit. And the pride of life, Hey, you'll be just like God. Mm -hmm. And those are the three basic foundational characteristics that draw every one of us human beings down the wrong path. And when we're driven down the wrong path, we're making wrong choices. And when we make wrong choices, people get hurt. People die. Years ago, doctors were notorious for ripping off uh, organs from black kids. They go in for an appendectomy. They rip off a kidney and give it to a white person because they knew they could get away with it and blacks didn't count back in the day. Theft, treachery, murder. People live half their lives. They suffer because of someone else's sins someone else's greed you have people out there trying to help people and as they try to help people people from these companies these countries they go to behead them murder them kill them why because they represent god they don't want god so they don't want god's people they murder and kill them treachery murder come on hate Sin. Now, what you don't realize is even though those good people had to die, death is oftentimes God's way of escape from an unbearable situation. So rather than have them rather than have them stay and endure, through God's love and mercy sucks their spirit out and brings them to paradise, real paradise. 
the real Eden, heaven. So they don't have to deal with this crap. So when people die, don't sit there and, put, and point your bony finger up at God. That's God giving them a relief. He's, he's relieving them from the burdens. Come on out of that mess. Come on. Come on. C come this way. You no longer have to feel that pain. I got you now. So think about that before you start pointing your bony finger up at God. When you want to say, God, where were you when I was being molested or when I was being raped? Where were you when I was being beaten by that gang? Where were you when my child got killed? Where were you when they took our home? Where were you when they took my job and I lost my family? Where were you? Well, why are you thinking of all the bad things that happened to you? Go down your itinerary and remember some of the bad things you did in your life. And then ask God this, where were you when I was beating my wife? Where were you when I was cheating on my husband? Where were you when I was beating my kids? Where were you when I was stealing their money? Where were you when I was lying and, and committing treachery because I was full of greed? Where were you when I turned my back on my parents because I was too selfish to be bothered with their needs? Where were you? 